We all love a mystery. Every good detective story has a mystery. And clues, suspects, and red herrings. Scientists are the same. Solving mysteries is our job. It's my job. And right now, I'm deep into a case that began with a mysterious signal. Let me take you back to 2007. A team of astronomers was looking at data taken with the Parkes Radio Telescope in New South Wales. They were looking for anything strange, anything different, anything unexplained. They were looking for a mystery to solve. And they found nothing. And nothing, and nothing, and nothing. And then, boom, a giant burst of radio waves lasting one thousandth of a second. And then nothing. What caused this fast radio burst? Where did it come from? Might there be more out there? These are the kinds of questions that get scientists excited. But before they could investigate further, they had to ask themselves one very important question. Did that burst even really come from space? You see, electronic equipment can also generate bursts of radio waves. How did they know that this fast radio burst wasn't produced by somebody using their phone too close to the telescope. They didn't know. See, the problem was this burst came and went in a thousandth of a second. It was gone. And what's more, it was long gone. The data the scientists had been looking at had been taken back in 2001, six years before they discovered it. Any clues as to its origin had long since vanished. So there was only one more thing they could do detect more of these fast radio bursts. And this time, they made sure that they'd identify these signals the instant they arrived. They found 16 more fast radio bursts. What new clues as to the origins did these contain? Well, to understand that, you need to understand a little bit about the Parkes radio telescope itself. It's like the megapixel digital cameras you probably all have in your phones, except it detects radio waves and it only, at the time, had 13 pixels. Now, why does this matter? Well, things in the universe might be big, but they're also really, really far away. A star a million kilometers across might appear as a tiny speck of light in the night sky. If these fast radio bursts had been coming from space, they would appear in only one of these radio pixels in the Parkes Radio Telescope these new 16 bursts appeared in all 13 pixels. They can't have been coming from space. So that was a disappointment. But the mystery wasn't solved. So the suspects now became the electronic equipment near the Parkes radio telescope. And in searching for the culprit, the astronomers were aided by one very important clue. These signals all seemed to come around lunchtime. It was the microwave that the astronomers used to heat up their lunch. <laughs> when the microwave door was opened, before the power was turned off, a burst of radio waves would escape, and voila, a fast radio burst. Mystery solved. Case closed. Except, scientists also detected four additional bursts. And these bursts occurred in only one radio pixel when the microwave wasn't on. The microwave turned out just to be a red herring. There really were fast radio bursts coming from somewhere in the universe. But where? We could now go back and ask these questions. What was producing fast radio bursts? How many more might there be? But where was the next clue going to come from? It turned out that clue came from the radio signal itself. You see, just like radio stations have different frequencies, the radio waves from space also have different frequencies. And as these radio waves are traveling through the universe, the very small amounts of gas in the universe cause the low radio frequencies to travel a little bit slower than the high radio frequencies. By measuring the time delay between the high and the low radio frequencies, scientists could tell how much gas these bursts had passed through. 
So how much gas had they passed through? More gas than is in our solar system. More gas even than is in our own galaxy. These bursts must have been coming from somewhere in the distant universe. OK, so we had our answer. Not our galaxy. It's not much of an answer. There's a lot of universe out there. To do better, we had to build a new radio telescope, ASCAP. This is located right here in Western Australia, maybe 600 kilometers away in the desert. It's actually 36 telescopes, all working together to act like just one big telescope. Now, not only could ASCAP detect fast radio bursts, but it could determine the direction that they were arriving from to within 100 thousandth of a degree. That's about the size of a coin seen at a distance of 100 kilometers. When scientists used ASCAP to detect a fast radio burst, we then got the world's most powerful optical telescopes in Chile, Hawaii, and the Hubble Space Telescope in orbit, and we pointed them back in the direction that this fast radio burst came from. And this is what we saw. This is the galaxy. It's a very distant galaxy. This is what a galaxy looks like, not when you have them nice up close to create beautiful images, perhaps for other tech talks, <laughs> but rather when this galaxy is so far away that you have to push the world's most powerful telescopes to their absolute limit just to detect that it's there. The fast radio burst that arrived from this galaxy took 3.5 billion years to reach us. Now, how could it possibly be seen over such a huge distance? Imagine how energetic it must have been. The energy from this fast radio burst was the same as is produced by our entire sun in a whole year, packed into one thousandth of a second. And that's not even the most remarkable thing about them. In order to produce a burst that lasts such a short time, whatever is producing them must be really small. Now, I'm an astronomer. What does small mean to me? We'll take the Earth, 12,742 kilometers in diameter. The Earth, astronomically speaking, is tiny. It's minuscule. It barely even exists. How could something as small as this Earth produce something that's seen after 3.5 billion years? Whatever was producing this fast radio burst, in order for it to last only a thousandth of a second, had to be no more than 10 kilometers in diameter. That's smaller than the city of Perth. So what could possibly be doing this? We don't know but we have suspects. One suspect is something called a neutron star. A neutron star is like a giant atomic nucleus, only a few kilometers in diameter, but so dense it has the mass of our entire sun. We're testing this theory by looking at neutron stars in our own galaxy, the Milky Way, and seeing if we can find fast radio bursts coming from them. Another theory is when two neutron stars collide. If that a collision occurs, they should produce gravitational waves, which are ripples in the fabric of space-time, and we're searching for these that may or may not occur at the same time as these fast radio bursts. But for now, we don't know. And that's OK, because science isn't about knowing, it's about finding out. However, the mystery of fast radio bursts is not the only mystery I've been working on. Back in 2007, there was another mystery, puzzling astronomers. We have this theory, the Big Bang, which describes the birth and evolution of our universe. It's a beautiful theory. It explains so much. And this theory predicts how much gas there should be in the universe. But when astronomers went out and looked for this gas, and they added up all the gas in stars and galaxies, they couldn't find it all. The mystery of the missing gas. My late mentor, Jean-Pierre Macquart, had an idea. Do you remember how I said earlier that when fast radio bursts are moving through the universe, the low frequencies go slower than the high frequencies?
because of the gas they pass through? He realized that if we could measure the time delay between the high and low radio frequencies from these fast radio bursts coming from distant galaxies, we could measure all the gas in the universe. So that's exactly what we did. A team of astronomers here at the International Centre of Radio Astronomy Research in Perth, together with other collaborators in Australia and overseas, used ASCAP to detect fast radio bursts. We measured the time delay between the high and low frequencies, and we determined the distant galaxies they were coming from. And we measured all the gas in the universe. How much was there? Did we have to overturn decades of scientific thinking and come up with a completely new model for everything, for the entire history of the universe? Or was the Big Bang theory correct? Did we find the missing gas? We did, thankfully. We found exactly the amount predicted by the theory of the Big Bang. But where was this missing gas? Well, it turns out this gas is almost invisible. It's not dark matter, that's something else entirely. But it's not bright, either. It doesn't glow like the gas in stars. And it's not dark, it doesn't absorb light like the gas we see in our own Milky Way. It just sits in the giant voids in between galaxies and does nothing. Nothing except slow down the low-frequency radio waves. Scientists love mysteries, and we just solved one of them. But do we have all the answers? Not by a long shot. There's still loads of unsolved mysteries out there. What is producing fast radio bursts? How can something so small produce something so powerful? And might there be one lurking in our own galaxy, the Milky Way, just waiting to be discovered? Science isn't about staying safe. It's about venturing into the unknown. And so, our investigation continues. We have new evidence to uncover new forensic data analysis to perform, and we've got loads of suspects. We'll solve this mystery too. Thank you.